Long before multiversal tournaments, ages before Super Saiyans were a dime a dozen, and years before powerful monsters threatened the Earth, Dragon Ball had its very first story arc, where a bunch of kids raced against the plottings of Emperor Pilaf. Their goals? Find the Dragon Balls and make a wish. But as we know, right as the Emperor was about to grasp ultimate power, his wish was interrupted by a pig who wished for the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. <laughs> The wish granting dragon scatters the now inert balls and vanishes from sight. Our heroes flee from Emperor Pilaf only to be captured and placed in a cell that will cook them as the sun rises. However, as the full moon shines above their heads, young Goku takes a look at the moon and is transformed into a giant ape monster. Pilaf and his minions, Mai and Shu, manage to escape. Goku returns to human form, Bulma and Yamcha update their relationship statuses, and our heroes all go their separate ways for now. Goku would go to meet his future best friend and train, and Yamcha would begin his own training to be the best fighter around. But what if we go back? Back before meeting Krillin, back before discovering Goku's transformation ability, back before Oolong the pig halted the Emperor's plans. And what if this time, Pilaf said eight simple words. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. To be king of the world! Welcome everybody to Whatever, the show where I take established universes and mess with them just for the heck of it. The first story arc of Dragon Ball was a good start for an amazing show. But today we're going to explore the possibilities behind Pilaf, actually succeeding, and what direction the writers would take if that had happened. In the anime, Shenron warns Pilaf, Make your wish, but beware, for it will come true. And if Pilaf said that he had wanted to be king of the world, Shenron would make it happen. Literally. Lights flash, the eternal dragon's eyes glow red, and then the dragon balls just scatter. The dragon disappears, and it seems as though nothing has changed. At this point in the anime, the existence of the king of the world hasn't yet been revealed, but there is a king of the world, and now Pilaf inhabits that king's body. Of course, the reverse is also true, and the king of the world, now in Pilaf's body, looks around and is startled by Shu who says, Sire, are you okay, sire? The king jumps back in confusion, takes a few breaths, and then realizes, oh, I'm dreaming. Of course, that makes sense. Sire, you're not dreaming. Of course I am, says the king. The king sees a castle in the distance and decides to make his way there. My and Shu follow. But then Oolong, who has experienced his first drop of bravery in his entire life, chases after Pilaf's body. The king, frightened by this dream-induced pig, tries to put some distance between them as he goes for the castle. Of course, Mai and Shu catch Oolong, and while those three are struggling, King Furry reaches the castle and goes inside. There he meets Yamcha, Bulma, and a very hungry Goku. King Furry asks the three kids where he is and what this dream is supposed to mean. Yamcha punches Pilaf right in his face, saying, It means you're going to get your butt kicked! King Furry rubs his face and says, I'm going to assume for a second that this is not a dream. Who are you? Boma kicks Furry across the room yelling, This is for my boyfriend! Furry lands in front of Goku. Are you going to attack me too, young one? Goku just stares into the void. So... Hungry. <laughs> King Furry backs up. Well then, don't look at me. No one wants a fuzzy meal. It just wouldn't go down right. The King, referring to fur that Pilaf's body clearly doesn't have, gives Bulma a thought. After the heroes discuss the fact that a wish was made and the dragon wouldn't respond just by doing nothing, something must have happened. We'll skip through this part. But basically, the kids figure out that King Furry and Emperor Pilaf has switched bodies, Freaky Friday style. Our heroes and the king walk outside the castle to find Oolong and Poor still fighting off Mai and Shu. The king clears his throat. <clears throat> the squabbling four stop mid-fight. Sire! calls out Shu. Hello, everyone, says King Furry. I would like to say something to all of you. Bulma bends over and whispers into the king's ears. 
angrier. Oh yes. Um, shut up, you, uh, dolts, and listen to me, your new king. While Furry is talking to the henchmen, Yamcha walks over to Poir and Oolong and asks them to play along. The king continues, That dragon did not fulfill my wish, but he did give me a foolproof plan to claim the throne, and has also given me these kids' loyalties. Now, Mai and Shu have known Emperor Pilaf for a long time. Long enough to know when something is amiss. Or at least it would be long enough if they weren't hopelessly stupid. Well, if you say so, sire. Meanwhile, in the king's palace, the king's body laughs. Maniacally. An attendant knocks on the king's bedroom door. Your highness, is everything okay? Yes. Everything is awesome. Our heroes formulate a plan. Bulma's father is the smartest man on earth. If anyone can devise a machine to swap Pilafs and the king's brains again, it would be him. Dr. Briefs. Of course, Mai and Shu insist on coming along, as they are under the impression that Pilaf is still Pilaf and wants to take over the king's body. Dr. Briefs is more than happy to help Bulma and her friends out, and after some careful thinking, he scribbles out the schematics necessary to undo the dragon's actions. Man, he's smart. Of course, they will need some materials that happen to be a bit more rare than what Dr. Briefs normally works with. Cue the next few episodes, where the heroes are looking for these materials. Yamcha, Goku, Boma, and the shapeshifters go look for one of the materials, while Mai and Shu go look for the other one. And while you can probably imagine what Team Goku's quest would look like, full of distractions, misunderstandings, but ultimately ending success, Team Henchmen would be a bit more... comical. After all, these two have proven that they stink at fetching important quest items. But they eventually get what they need. Barely. And by the skin of their teeth. During their quest, Yamcha is looking at Bulma as someone to impress. His fear of girls isn't a thing when it comes to Bulma. Well, not anymore at least. But in the original timeline, that initial spark happened right after Yamcha helped cut off Goku's tail, disabling Goku's rampage. He hasn't been able to impress her yet, and he really, really wants to impress her. But every chance he gets is being stolen. Sometimes it's Goku stealing his thunder. Other times Oolong is hogging the spotlight. And sometimes Bulma herself is solving the problems before Yamcha has a chance to do anything. Poor Yamcha. While the two groups are out searching, Pilaf, masquerading as the king, arrives at Dr. Brief's home lab. You see, this whole time, Pilaf has been struggling to adapt to the king's body. And he can't take it anymore. He asked his advisors if there was anyone really good at inventing stuff. Of course, the world famous Dr. Briefs was the first person to come to mind for the advisors, but Pilaf has never been one for keeping up with the celebrities. Nonetheless, Pilaf is here to ask Dr. Briefs about a machine that would allow him to change his body so it would be more manageable. While there, Pilaf and the king notice each other. You see, Pilaf is an idiot, and he never considered the possibility that the king was running around in his old body but he quickly snaps into action. Pilaf demands to know why his old body is hanging out in Dr. Brief's lab. Dr. Briefs quickly comes up with an excuse. This is my daughter's friend. Pilaf looks at his old body. It looks like him, but he's wearing different clothes and a baseball cap. Maybe it's just a look-alike. Pilaf backs off and apologizes for the outburst. Not a problem, laughs Dr. Briefs. It had been a while since she'd come by, but when your kid comes and asks you for help, how can you say no, am I right? Dr. Briefs looks at a framed picture of Bulma when he says this. Yes, yes, yes. Pilaf's eyes notice the same picture. What? <laughs> Recognizing Bulma's picture, he immediately kidnaps Dr. Briefs. The king, seeing this happen from the other room, decides to remove himself from the area. Pilaf orders his men to find the little blue guy and arrest him. The men are unable to find their target, and so eventually the king and his men leave with Dr. Briefs in tow. The next day, our heroes, and the henchmen, each return with the rare materials they needed. The king explains what happened while they were gone. Bulma, of course, feels fear for her father. Yamcha, on the other hand, sees this as his golden chance. He leads the charge to rescue Dr. Briefs from Pilaf's clutches. Of course, 
Bulma is quick to point out that there is no point in doing that until the machine is ready. And she thinks that she can complete it. Hours pass and finally Bulma, the smartest woman on earth, finishes the machine. She decides to test it out by switching Goku and Yamcha's brains. It works! But it fizzles out shortly after. We can get a nice filler episode here where Bulma fixes the machine and Yamcha and Goku get into trouble. Within a couple of hours, the machine is fixed, however. Yamcha and Goku return to their bodies and the team heads off to the King's Palace. Mai and Shu are used as decoys to get the guards away from the door. The King and his heroic escorts get him into the palace and to the King's throne room. But he is not there. So they wait. And eventually, Pilaf enters the throne room. Goku grabs him and holds him down while Bulma gets the machine ready. Hearing the struggle, guards burst into the room. Seeing Bulma holding what appears to be a gun toward the king, the guards rush and tackle her. Pilaf lets loose an evil laugh, but then Mai and Shu enter the room and tackle the guards. Pilaf's face turns to one of terror. Now! Do it now! yells Mai. Bulma pulls the trigger. The king and Pilaf switch back to their original bodies. Pilaf immediately scolds Mai and Shu. How dare you guys wreck this for me again! The king has the three bad guys arrested. Mai and Shu are, as usual, clueless about what's happening. And as the series progresses, there are a few major plot points to consider that are different. One, the king of the world now has a personal relationship and knowledge of our young heroes. Two, Goku has missed out on about a month of training with Master Roshi, while Krillin has enjoyed a month of training without Goku, giving him a leg up on the young Saiyan. And three, Pilaf, Mai, and Shu are now captives of the world's government. And that is what would happen if Pilaf got his wish from the Eternal Dragon. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Whatever, guys. I really enjoyed making it. I'm really looking forward to doing some more what ifs here in the future. Uh, if you like this video, please press the like button, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you get notifications for our videos. Share this around, uh, check out our Patreon, all those things. Um, and until next time, whatever.